if we if we had gone back on our faith, she, she would have lost her eternal life. I don't believe that. And I realize now I never did believe it. But... I married you because I love you. When you asked me to promise certain things, I promised them because you asked me. That's as far as my belief went, just as far as you. But I never really thought until last night. And last night I knew that living was here on this earth. Now, Ruth warm and breathing. Stop! That's what I did. I tried to save Ruth's earthly life. How do I know there's any other? I've only been your wife in love, John. Never in faith. Now that you know I don't really belong here, do I? in the sea. <laughs> if it had been a cat or a dog or a horse that had been howling for his blood. Like you're doing. The coroner should have torn Harris in half, not acted like a wet nurse. Passing the buck, Jim. This touch is religion and that's dynamite. Ah, so it is. Maybe it's time someone got blown sky high. You sound as brutal as you're making Harris out to be. Maybe I am. It's not the man himself I'm after. It's the fact that he can, he can kill and be allowed to get away with it. That makes more sense. It feels a damn helpless. Come on, you've done everything you can. Forget it. It's finished. That kid gets better tomorrow. Richard, will you drive my car back to the hospital for me? I think I'll just walk it off. See you, sir. Well, well. Sir? Show him in. Dr. Brown, sir. Come in, doctor. I shan't keep you a minute. Well, what can I do for you? You were at the inquest on Ruth Harris, weren't you? Uh, yes, there was. What's going to happen? I'm not sure I'm with you as a result of the verdict. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Doctor. Well, I've heard the evidence. The coroner's given his verdict and everyone will be satisfied, I'm sure. The coroner's verdict isn't final. Is that so? No. The police can take the matter further. Well, yes, that has been done. Well, first of all, the police have to disagree with the coroner's verdict. And even then, they don't move. They can't move, in fact, without a lot of evidence to support them. Harris was responsible for his child's death because he refused to let me give her treatment that would have saved her life. I should have thought that was evidence enough. Right. So I heard you say at the inquest. Are the police going to do anything more? Religion's a tricky business, Doctor. Very tricky. Everyone feels, nobody thinks. So you're not going to do anything? There's nothing I can do. I'll take further advice. That's your privilege, Doctor. As a private citizen. Should be with John. Must be 
awful for him all alone in that house with, with Ruth. No. You love him, Pat. Do I? Can I go back and pretend? Pretend all over again that I believe like he does. Maybe give him another child. You're worn out. Come on to bed, love. No, I'll just sit here for a bit. I couldn't sleep anyway. Don't get cold then. They should put you away, that's what they should do. You won't get away with it, though. You don't deserve to have a child. Leave him alone. He's got nothing to do with you. Get out. service there is. Come home, John. Please come home. see you. I just read your article. You took a strong line. Glad someone here had the guts to speak out. I'd like to help if I can. What's your next step? What gave you the idea I was going to take one? I watched your face at the inquest. All right, I won't deny it. I want to find out the exact legal position. There must be a right of appeal somewhere. Who's a good solicitor? Art Jacobs in Durham. He's your boy. I've known him for years. We play golf together. Do you want to meet him? Yeah. Yes. that you can lay information before the magistrates. If they think there's enough evidence to put Harris on trial, they'll commit him. He'll go to Assizes on a charge of manslaughter. Not murder? No, no premeditation, no intent to kill. You'll have to be satisfied with manslaughter. What do I do next? You'll find yourself a solicitor. Well, that's you. No. I'm completely out of sympathy with you, Brian. Why, for heaven's sake? Because I think he's cutting across the most private things in a man's life. What right have you to criticize Harris's beliefs? Because the child's dead. Dead. To you, not to him. Superstitious dogma. I believe you're a Catholic, Clyde? Like? Yeah. Well, there's another decision you might have to make one day, Doctor. Whether to save a mother's life or that of her unborn child. Clyde's church would sacrifice the mother's life. Clyde would sacrifice the living mother for the unborn child. Harris would sacrifice the living child for its life to come. It's everlasting life. Look, I'm a doctor. It's my business to save life here. That's simple enough, isn't it? Then you mean to go through with this? Yes. I do. Well, I'm not taking it on. I'm a Jew. The thing smacks of persecution to me. Persecution, we've got to make an 
example of Paris to stop this happening again. <laughs> you and your crusades. Last month it was fox hunting. Now look. Uh, all right. I know, you're right to my heart. Well, if you won't take it on, you won't. You can go and see Mapleton. Yes, Mapleton's a man, Doctor. Cold-blooded fish. He knows law. Coming, Clyde? I think we need a drink. You have it. I need some exercise. Bye, Doctor. Private action on a charge such as manslaughter is unusual, of course. So the right of any man to bring a charge against another is as old as the law itself. It goes right back to the days when the village elders held court under the oak tree. Yes, well, our authority would be Regina versus Senior, 1899. In many ways parallel, the case turned upon the interpretation of the words willfully neglects. The father refused medical care and the child died. He killed her then. Well, at any rate, they got him on a manslaughter charge. What happened? The jury found him guilty. Yes, well, we can get Harris under Section 1 of the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act, 1894. Renamed the Children and Young Persons Act in 1933, but basically still the same. Will it take long? No, no, this is brief, simple. Facts as plain as day. All contained in your statement, corroborated by Auntie Davis from the other doctor and the sister. Say nothing of the declaration that Harris signed, taking full responsibility for his action. Well, in my opinion, I don't see how the magistrates will be able to say there's no case to answer. Well, Superintendent Finley didn't take that view. Oh, well, he's a cautious man. Anyway, the police had to think past the magistrate's doctor right after the judge and jury. But don't ask me for an opinion there. All right, Mr. Mapleton. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. May I see Mr. Reynolds? Vickers round a youth hall. They repaired the leak last week. Now they're doing the war. Thank you. into another church. It isn't the church that matters. Do you know what's happened? Yes, I know. Your husband, does he approve of your coming to see me? He doesn't know. We're not together anymore. Oh, that's sad. Did you expect me to stay with him? I'm old-fashioned. I believe until death us do part. Why did you leave him? I wasn't ever really with him. Not the way he thought I was. Mr. Reynolds, is everything we read in the Bible true? Did God want Ruth to die? Your husband thinks so. He believes his God called Ruth unto himself. Why do you say his God is the same God for us all, isn't it? No, it isn't. What's the difference then? We all read the same book. The difference is very simple. We pick and choose. From the same book, as you say. One man reads God is merciful, one man reads God is wise, one man reads God is the law. We all treat the church like a supermarket. <laughs> Go in and buy half a pound of the belief that pleases us best. You did that, didn't you, Pat? You chose a belief that pleased you because it pleased your husband. Yes, I did. That's exactly what I did. Your husband didn't. His faith came from within. His faith killed Ruth. I don't believe she should have died, do you? No, I don't. I believe God gave us the gift of earthly life and meant us to sustain that gift. Pat, why have you come here? I love John. And I want to go back to him. But it won't work unless I can pretend I think what he did was right and accept his beliefs. Can I go back and pretend? That's what I came here to ask. When I prepared you for confirmation, I told you God is truth. Well, just now you said, till death us do part. One contradicts the other. There's no magic answer, is there? No, you can or you can't. Half a dozen times in my life, I've had the chance of being a real priest. 
Now you offer me another chance, and I don't know what to say to you. But this I do know. You must not go against the truth. That's the supreme law, and the truth for you is in your own heart. That's it, then. Your God doesn't seem to have helped me very much, Mr. Reynolds. The world's a very lonely place without him. I'm lonely without my husband. I suppose the truth is, we all have to find our own answers. Bye, Mr. Reynolds. Bye. We'll try traction. I'm against operating in these cases. Come in. Oh. Oh, come in, Jim. I'm just going. Oh, that's all right, Richard. Mr. Marshall doesn't mind. I don't. I'm going to instruct Mapleton, the solicitor, to ask the magistrates to issue a warrant for the arrest of John Harris. I thought you should know. Arrest? He was cleared at the inquest. Aren't the police satisfied? Well, maybe they are. I'm not. I'm taking an action against him for manslaughter. Manslaughter? But this was aired at the inquest. Why do you want to go further? I forgot to. Can't leave things as they are. It's too important. Uh, Jim, this is all very public spirit, but it could clear your whole future. Remember, you're a doctor. We're very vulnerable. This might be interpreted as trying to draw a lot of attention to yourself. But I want attention. I want people to know what happened to this child. Harris had the right to say no, and he said it. But that's what's wrong, you see. He shouldn't have the right. No parent should have that responsibility. And that's why I've got to fight him. The medical profession is concerned with healing. You'd well to remember that fact, James. So forget the child. She's dead and buried. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't become a doctor to act as an undertaker. James! James! Doctors should stick to doctoring and leave law to lawyers. Do you like a high court judge to take out your appendix? Evening, John. Uh, I wondered if you'd like to come over for a bit of supper. Or... I was just going to put the kettle on for a cup of tea. You're coming with me, lad. Come on. Hello, Harry. That didn't take long. Is he coming? Come in. Come on, lad. Sit yourself down. There we are. He was just going to make himself a cup of tea, Mother. Oh. No, I, I won't have any tea, thanks. Oh, well, sit down for a minute. I, I want to talk to you. I, I've got to talk to someone. Wait, you know what I did? You know the result? Well, I have to know what you think. People have seen it every day for years. What do you think? Teddy's alive, John. If it weren't for you, he'd be dead. Well, a man can only speak for himself. If it had come to mark his life, I'd have done what the doctors told me, whether it was against my religion or not, but... Well, we don't live by the cut and dried rules, you do. No. We go to church for christenings and marriages, and... But we... we don't think all that much about it. For us, it's the simple things. Do unto others as you'd have them do to you. You know, just the simple things. You see, it's much easier for us than it is for you. So, well, we're not really able to answer your question. We will never be put to the test. Well, I'm glad Teddy's all right. I, I won't stay for supper, thank you. You've been very kind. Well, you know what's best, John. But if you feel like company, just come over. Ah, well, you'll always be welcome. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, then. Hey, I wish there was something I could do. He's a good man, you know. Are you sure that we'd think that if he hadn't saved Teddy's life? Magistrate.
Magistrate's Court. Dr. Brown got his warrant. What's the charge? Manslaughter. I was at school with John Harris. Known him all my life. Well, get on with it, Elliot. Don't just stand there. Yes, sir. Saturday, the 9th of January, caused the death of Ruth Harris. It is my duty to warn you that anything you say may be taken down and used in evidence. Well, how'd they make that out? Well, I got you on the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act. see you or anybody. Maybe, maybe he'll feel different tomorrow. Try and see him early before he comes up in court. Mrs. Harris, could I talk to you for a minute? My name's Hart Jacobs. Yes? I'm afraid this is rather unprofessional, but I want to handle your husband's defense. Who are you? A solicitor. Why do you want to handle my husband's defense? Because I think he's innocent of the charge laid against him. You do? You really do? Would you like to get in my car and talk for a few minutes? Please. I don't understand how they make it out. Well, they charged your husband on the Prevention of Cruelty to Children Act. Cruelty to children. Well, how can they say a thing like that about John? He was the best and kindest father that ever lived. I'm sure he was. Now, this is how it goes. Tomorrow will be just the preliminary hearing before the magistrates, when he'll be committed for trial. Trial? I shall reserve defence, apply for bail. Have you any ideas who might... Oh, yes. He's not alone in his faith. I know where to go. It won't be an excessive sum. I'm going to see Dr. Brown. I'm going to ask him to withdraw his action. I don't think he'll do that, Mrs. Harris. Well, I must try. <coughs> Dr. Brown, I must speak to you. I was just off to the hospital, Mrs. I Harris. must speak to you. Come in. arrested my husband. I know. Of course you know you did it. 
I want you to drop the case. I'm sorry. I can't. But it won't do any good. Ruth's gone. And nothing you can do will bring her back. Why do you hate John? I don't hate him. I hate what he did. I believe in living, not dying. But who's going to live because you put John in prison? Some other child in some other place, I hope. One hanging doesn't stop the next murder. You said it now, haven't you? He killed Ruth, and you know it. I know I love him. That's the only thing I do know now. And love goes with charity and forgiveness, things you could never understand. What John did was right to him. You don't share your husband's convictions, do you, Mrs. Harris? If it gives you any satisfaction to hear it, no, I don't. I know that now. But I understand how real they are to John. He did the same as his father would have done, and his grandfather. They hang down their faith. So now, perhaps his father's the real criminal, or his father. They influence their children's minds before they're old enough to make their own decisions. You're very good at making other people look at themselves, Dr. Brown. Well, you've got blindness, too. There is something beyond science. You don't see it, but John does, and he has the strength to live by it. All right. Carry on with your case. But I wish I knew what you think you're going to gain by it. I told you. Another life in another place. Perhaps another mother saved the, the heartbreak you're feeling now. nothing to say. Do you agree with your husband's view? I Mrs. tell Harris? you, she has nothing to say, now leave her alone. Come on, let her at least make a statement. Have a heart, a couple of words, please. Were you in the hospital when your daughter died? Did you see yes. it? What happened? Did she die quickly? Was she in pain? Get away. Let us go through. No, no, no. Oh, 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 This is Mr. Hart Jacobs. He wants to conduct your defense. I don't need a defense. I've committed no crime. Well, that may well be, Mr. Harris, but you've been accused of committing one. It's up to us to show the court that the charge is false. Mr. Hart Jacobs wants to help you, John. He thinks you're innocent. Please, John. John. I see your point, Mr. Harris, but don't you think that if no defense is put up on your behalf, it'll be taken not as a sign of innocence, but as a proof of guilt? The guilty man, of course, has nothing to say, but the innocent man will say, at least I am not guilty. I'll say that. But then you say they'll ask you why are you not guilty, and that's where I come in. For a man with no legal training to try and answer the questions of the prosecutor and defend himself at the same time is very difficult, believe me. John. You are not the only one to be tried. It's everybody who believes as you do. We are all on trial. Your father's right, Mr. Harris. He and every single member of your faith is in the dock. All right, then. You're up next, Harris. Come along now. slip out that way. Oh, I've arranged with Superintendent Findlay to give your husband 48 hours protection. Protection? I won't mislead you, Mrs. Harris. He's going to need it for a bit. 